All right, today is a fun day for me personally because I get to repair some original 1960s fuzz pedals. And I think, you know, the only thing I enjoy more in life than building fuzz pedals and pedals in general is getting to fix originals that sound awesome and just keep them going and stewarding them kind of for the future generations. Um, so I got a couple Maestro fuzz tones. There's plenty of info out there on those, so no need for a video. But I wanted to do a quick video of this guy. It came to me from a guy in Canada who's originally from Texas, and he got this on uh, Kijiji, sent it to his friend in Texas, and then um, it was sent to me in, God, February of this year, and it's now June 6th, uh, 20th, what am I, yeah, 6th, it's June 20th, so this thing's been here for months, things are wacky with acid fuzz, you know, I have wait lists for everything, and you know, I'm one guy, you know, and my wife helps out with the taxes and stuff, And but I, I'm not in a position to hire other people, so, you know, I do what I can, I'm not, you know, some crazy big company like some people think, it's honestly just me, and I do the best I can. So anyway, I'm finally getting to this today. And I'm going to show you guys what's up with it. I'll try to repair it in real time. And um, let's see if we can unfuck it, as it were. Okay. So the situation with this guy here is that as it came to me, um, the original Texas Instruments 2N4061 PNP silicon transistor was pulled out and replaced with a uh, germanium the guy got off of eBay. And I don't blame him at all. And he's not a hack at all. He didn't butcher this pedal. It's just, we don't know what we don't know. And he couldn't find any information on this because uh, there really isn't any out there. And, um, you know, he did kind of what he could. He's an amp guy, not a pedal nerd um, like us. And one thing I noticed though, is that this replacement germanium two is in the wrong position like the collector from what i traced out and what i think the schematic should be you know the collector should be down here the base here where the collector is and then the emitter skipping uh, all the way up to ground skipping a trace so you know that seems to be like an obvious problem the other obvious thing to check is that this electrolytic cap may have dried up and the ESR may be through the roof and it's just junk. That's actually the problem with the uh, Maestro Fuzz Tones. Uh, well, one of them had other problems as well, but both of them needed, uh, oh, sorry, one of them needed electrolytics really bad. The other one will still work, but I, I may replace it anyway. I, I don't know, just for insurance while I'm in there. This trimmer also is suspect because it measures around 3K in circuit, but it skips around and, and will start to read infinite and zero. One thing I noticed um, right away as well is, I don't know if you can see, there's a big solder booger right here. And that's kind of globbed on and looks like it's bridged um, these two traces in the back. So I'm just gonna clean that up, um, make sure that's all kosher. All right, not sure if you can see this, but this negative nine volt um, lead was actually broken, uh, the trace. So I'm gonna restrip this. And this, I think, may have been the actual problem with the pedal the whole time. Um, I guess we'll find out shortly. All right, so I've got my ESR meter on the 25 microfarad electrolytic that's a lot older than I am. And let's hope she's still in good order. Uh, okay, 1.4 ohms. That's actually awesome. So we can keep the original electrolytic. Um, all right, let's move on. Okay, so I was just thinking, you know, this resistor here is normally 2.2 megs. And it is a shiny, like, brand new NOS condition, uh, Allen Bradley carbon composition. And this looks like it's been replaced. So I'm going to go ahead and unbridge these traces, but I'm assuming this is wrong, this um, 47 ohm resistor, because that would just make this thing ridiculously loud. And uh, just that just doesn't seem right. So I've never seen, you know, a germanium zonk that didn't have a much higher value resistor here. So 
anyway, we'll see if this thing um, fires up and biases. And um, if it needs to get tamed back a little, I'll just put a 2.2 meg there. Okay, so I've got it running into the Vox Berkeley. Um, and it's barely on one. I don't know if you can see that. So I could tell right away. I mean, I'll give you guys a listen, but that 47 ohm output resistor is just crazy low. I'm going to have to put the um, stock 2.2 meg in, but um, this is what it sounds like, you know, and I mean, the swell isn't even all the way up. Um. You know, if I go ahead and play. That guy's got to come out of there. I'm throwing a 2.2 meg in, and I might just call it done after that. You know, I'll um, tweak the bias. But um, yeah, it's alive, and um, I think that you know that negative uh, nine volt uh, lead was the only issue. Um, I don't know why that 47 ohms in there, honestly. Uh, that can't be stock. I mean, people, everybody was high in the 60s and, you know, you'd have to be smoking acid out of a butt bong to think that that is like normal. Like that would overdrive the input of any valve amp of any era. So, I mean, I'm just going to replace it with a 2.2 meg and uh, I think I'll call it done. So let's get a 2.2 meg. I got new ones, you know, um, people still make carbon comps but I'm not gonna put a shiny new 2.2 meg. I wanna keep this thing old and dirty. So I'm gonna grab an old crusty Allen Bradley carbon comp and um, we'll throw one of those in there and uh, see what it sounds like. All right, so um, fuzz is up, you know, only about 10 o'clock. If I gain it up, you know, any gain pedal is gonna have a little background noise. But the noise you're hearing is really just my single coils with the office lights. I have this also wired for humbuckers, so, you know, if I have it humbucking, it's a lot quieter. But um, anyway, here's the bypass signal. And with the zonk. Alright, 
so I went ahead and pulled out the original trimmer um, just to make sure uh, I could confirm what the bias value was that sounded good to my ear and it was about 152k and also because of um, parallel resistances in circuit I, I can't get an accurate reading really uh, with the equipment that I have so I wanted to confirm what the actual value of the trimmer is as such and it is a 500k trimmer uh, clip that guy on there for you so you can see it reads about 489k so it's a 500k and i'm glad that it's in good order because it's this old style they don't make anymore they're really hard to find i uh, do have some but i have like 50k which wouldn't work at all and i have some um slightly physically smaller 10k so i don't even know if those would fit on the board and, you know, it's an original. If it was a later replacement, you'd see some kind of gross 80s, 90s production, born, sphere, uh, something like that, you know. And one thing I'm not going to do is pull out the um, original uh, Q1 and Q3 germaniums to measure the gain in leakage. Because honestly, I'm never going to find another TIA02618 transistor. And... Um, it's always risky uh, soldering, desoldering germaniums, even with, you know, heat sinks. And I did do that on the first Zonk I ever cloned from, which I think was Dave Main's old Zonk machine, an all germanium one. That was just a bitchin' pedal. It was just awesome. So I had to know, you know, so I very carefully uh, dissected that one. But, you know, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. And I already know enough, and I think people don't want to hear this, to know that they're all different from the factory. I've never seen two vintage fuzz pedals, even plain Jane things like the Vox Tone Bender, that had exactly the same gains and leakages for every transistor set. And, you know, they don't make things like they used to. Component tolerances were wacky back then. And um, my advice is just, you know, use your ears and your brain when you're building one of these and build something that sounds good to you. Because... Honestly, it's subjective. There are no exact perfect gains and leakages other than what works and sounds best for you and your ears. All right, so, you know, it's only like 62 degrees in, um, in my office right now, and I'd like to get bias voltages on this guy. So um, I just start a fire. I'm going to get it up to, you know, room temperature. You know, anything that has anything to do with germanium, it always has to be built and tested at room temperature because as everyone who knows anything about germanium, uh, they're super temperamental with, with temperature changes. So I'll get it up to room temperature and I can get some accurate bias voltages um, on all three transistors. And um, I'll try to throw that all together with the schematic and upload it to freestompboxes.org. Okay, so the temperature is up to 70 in the office and, um, you know, I went ahead and did the bias voltages at 70 degrees with um, more or less a 9 volt battery. It's not, you know, some fresh batteries are like over 9, some, you know, weak or under. So just to give you accurate readings, I, I try to keep it at 9 volts exactly. So here are the voltages. I hope this helps someone, you know, who if you ever get a repair or you're trying to clone this pedal, um, this is what the hybrid, um, you know, biases out like. One thing to note is Q2, the 2N4061, doesn't have the same collector base emitter pinout. The leads are different. Um, so you're going to have your base collector, then emitter, rather than collector base and emitter. So don't let that throw you off. Um, you know, halfway is 7.16 volts and full fuzz is 3.632. I like it at about like 6.6 .6 to my ear. But um, if you have the fuzz all the way down, it actually gates right out and you don't get anything. Um, and then at full fuzz, it gets gnarly and spitty, almost like a Mark I tone bender, just unruly. Um, so, you know, you got to kind of bias it to your own taste. Some people dig that, you know. So I hope this helps, you know, someone somewhere. All right. One last thing I'm going to do um, before I button this back up is just get rid of this 
swell and fuzz that someone wrote to kind of identify. Uh, that's not original. I mean, the people that built these knew what these were. It's obvious to anyone. So I'm just going to take some alcohol and um, gently get rid of that nonsense. All right. So one last thing I did for this old lady, just out of love and respect for her, for what and who she is, is I replaced the original hardware. And I know this is super nerd level with... Um, I took some blue hammer tone screws that I had from an acid fuzz zonk that I had, you know, taken in and out a bunch of times and most of the paint chipped off. And I just put them on here and they kind of, you know, they complete the whole thing. Like that little bit of hammer tone makes it look like this is how the pedal was, you know, supposed to be. Uh, they were all originally, you know, painted screws on the ones that I've seen. So... I don't know. I used to be a mod. I got to keep it classy. You know, it, it had a bunch of these um, screws in there that, you know, they look old, but they look like old replacements because someone lost the originals. And um, this hammer tone uh, paint here is actually really super close. I don't know if that shows up on camera, but um, this green one here and the blue, they're both like super close. I think the green's a little closer, but Anyway, I had it, so why not do it while it's here? All right, so here's the schematic. I mean, it's not much different than a regular germanium zonk, other than Q2 being um, silicon and having a 500K trimmer to bias it versus a uh, fixed 470K resistor, which is arguably way better anyway, even on a germanium. Um, it's nice to have that control because I don't personally always like a 470K. Um, you know, there were some versions that had a different output cap I've seen. I've seen an audio fuzz pot, which is arguably better as well because it gives you a better sweep. But, um, you know, it's more or less just a germanium zonk with a couple tweaks. All right, so there she is um, back together in all her glory and sounding good. Probably ready to go back to the owner as is. And I don't know what's going to happen to this. The owner, I heard, he think he wants to sell it. I don't know. And he, both he and I are huge Doyle Bramhall 2 fans. Um, you know, think he's like one of the best guitar players out there now. And um, he loves these things. I actually made, uh, have him right here, a miniature version of this for him. Like, kind of like a pedal board friendly version called the Zoink. Um which I thought was just a cute way to make, you know, the small thing and not be just copying the zonk. And um, it's got a tone switch, an LED, you know, 9-volt jack. But it's more or less the same as the germanium uh, zonk. And he uses them live, God bless him. I mean, they're a pain in the butt live with temperature changes. You can't control always what the venue is going to be like. And I think with the silicon transistor, this is a lot more temperature stable. And I think that's probably why they did it. So I'm probably going to do a silicon version of the Zoink 2. Maybe it'll be like an option um, people can order. That's it. All done.